Good afternoon and welcome back to the garden. Now finally we're going to start by pulling some of this rhubarb. As you can see it's it's monster this year. I don't know why it's got this big. We've made done nothing to it other than what we do other years, but it's a monster. Now I have removed the flowers as they've been coming and now we want to get in and try and pull the red stalks that'll let more light in and then probably the green ones will turn red in. One thing you want to remember when the rhubarb is this big as we go into it there'll be some yellow leaves that will want pulling away and taking away. If you don't they'll just go rotten and leaf and you'll have all the slugs etc in the bottom. Let's have a go. Now, should I fall in, we'll switch off while Diane gets a rope to pull me out. <laughs> what I should do, I should pull them and put them down, then we'll cut them, put the tops in the wheelbarrow and the bottoms in the truck. Lovely stems, look at the length on them. Right? That's a nice one as well. I'll have to go right round the whole of the plant. I'll get them pulled and then come back to you. Right, we've pulled a fair amount at the moment and I've just got these to cut back. You do always do it about an inch below and just take it through. Look at the length on that. <laughs> That's a pudding on its own. And just take them across. I do compost the leaves. I put them on top of the manure bin and I hit them with a heavy um, piece of timber and it breaks them up a little bit and they rot down quicker. That must be the longest one we've got. There you go. There you are, a good trug full of new rhubarb and it'll taste as good as it looks. Now we're just about to go down to do some planting. Now here are my tomato crop for outdoors, all here hardening up a little bit. We got a bit of pale leaf there but I think they was on the front when we had a bit of cold wind but they'll soon Soon colour up, that's no problem. They're showing so well, lot they've actually started to put tomatoes on, the side shoots are up. So this week, we'll get those planted, I'll set the canes up, and I'll film it, and we'll add it to next week so you can see it. Now that's the onion plot planted. I ran out at that line there, but it weren't a bad thing because it gave me this bit of room where I've been able to put radish, spring onions, red mate onions and some more red mate onions there. So we'll keep those running through for the season now. As the first rows of radish start to come then I shall set another one at this end so there's continuity going. Now I have planted a few more lettuce to follow on those few I had in here and also at the back that's a little bit of kohlrabi we don't use a lot but there's just enough there for what we'll want now the carrots are doing quite well and the parsnips 
Another job I should be doing in the next few days is weeding those carrots because there's quite a few weeds coming up in there so I must get in there and I'll reduce the parsnips to one per station and that should be enough for them to finish. I have ridged some of the potatoes they've actually were nearly covered but now they've grown through again but I left this row to do with you but the these two rows which are the first earners I don't ridge those up I just leave those because we're digging them up soon. I use the rake and I've been trying to keep the soil between the rows of potatoes worked a little bit so it's easier to ridge them up. I'll do this side first then I can stand there to do this side. It's only a case pulling up. If you go in about halfway you can see that all the manure and goodness is doing it actually. A bit wet but um, that'll be all right. They're not going to take too much of that because they are the first earlies and they'll be they might even have potatoes on. I'll do this side and then to the other. By ridging the main crop up, this is the first ridge. I will actually do it again with some fertilizer in the, the gullies and take that up. This encourages more potatoes to come out of the stems. And we're in favor of that. It doesn't matter if you cover the leaves. It's a bit sticky, but it'll be all right. There's a lot of worms in it, eating all that manure and compost we put in. It's, uh, they're doing rather well. There you go. Now, because I've done a little bit more space between rows, it makes the ridging up easier and also it gives more room for the air to pass through to keep the potato tops dry so we might not get blight. You could use a draw hoe on this if you wanted, but I find the rakes easiest. I can actually walk between these rows. Great to take the footprints out, leave it tight. This is the high tunnel that we use for Brussels sprouts and what I've done I've put coffee grounds around each plant because the slugs are beginning to make holes in them as you can see but since I've put that round I've had no more holes in them. I'll just show you where I'm putting the sweet corn. I'm following the plan and this is where we had them. So I put them there. It's a nice windy piece because they're wind pollinated so they'll do quite well here. This is actually the plot for the tomatoes. 
so I should be setting, as you see they're ready, so I should be setting the canes up this week with you and get those in. Just four left to put in, I've already marked where I want them, then I can get all my spacing correct as I go. So I'll take them out. Quite deep these, and I just crunch that up. That's plenty deep, that one. Deep. In root trainers and we'll open them up. There you go, all rooted down nicely. And I just pop those in. I pop them in and then we'll fill them with the trowel. You see, just right, just right. I start this end so you can see it. Just go and loosen it. If you remember when you push that bull planter in, it makes makes a shiny hole. So, and then what I do, as you can see, I just go along like that, round them, make a square. And no. Once I've been round. I just chop them a little bit. Like that. So I'll plant these three and I'll show you them done. That's the sweet corn planted. There's not many plants there, but that is all the plants we really got. I got about the right number. <coughs> Excuse me. That's all the plants we got out of one packet. It doesn't seem many, but there's enough for what we'll want. But to do double, these are quite expensive seed. They are hybrids and they're called Swift. We're in the fruit case doing a little bit of planting now, but I'll just show you the dwarf peas and the dwarf beans I've already put in. And what I've done is I've put some of this, but it's very soft wire. It's very thin and very soft and I've put them in just to give them a little bit of support they'll soon latch on to them they'll never get to the top I don't think but at least it will support them a little bit that's the row of the dwarf bean that's the sonata that's that yellow one we put in last week I think on this side I'm going to try three rows of cocoa de pampole now they haven't They've germinated all right, and when I put them in the cold frame, I think we had a little bit of wind from the east, which was too cold for them, so it's took a lot out. So I've got enough for two rows, and then I've still got seed left, and I'll put those for the third row and see, see if they catch each other up. I've grown these in the root trainers again. The root trainers are coming towards the end of their life now. They don't last awfully long. And what I'm doing is, I put the line on, and I put the holes in. I don't know if you can hear the birds singing, but it's a beautiful day for them. And then I'm planting that row, making the holes so I've got rows side by side. I'll show you when it, how I do it. Just put those in. A little bit careful with them because they, they've done well to get this far if that wind was blowing them. But I think I've lost a third of them to the wind. But it's a, like most of these things, it is a lesson to be learned. And because this ground is quite soft, I can push those together and then put some soil up against them then what I do 
is to make a second row. I put this there. But... Put a second row in. I'll just do four just to show you how I do it. Away from those, so there's a space in the middle. We've had days of dry and this land is so wet. Now I'll just put these four in. I have actually got some pongo beans from Bill and Val Blestem and I shall put those over there and use the fruit case to keep the birds off all these peas and beans. And put that there, same again. The ground is quite softy, it's not long dug, so I can put them together with my hand like that. And you've got the you got the gist of how I do it. I've got enough there to finish this row. I just jump that. I'll finish these later this afternoon and I also want to go down and clean the bottom of the rhubarb out a bit. I did notice there was a lot of yellow leaves down there they weren't cleaning out so I'll do that, finish these. I'll try and what I've got left I'll do a, perhaps a single row and then I'll set C. Now that's a bit for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and that subscribe. We do appreciate it. Now next time we're on we'll do those get those tomato canes in and get those tomatoes in. Must go with that. A few more beans in here and then there's some leeks, celery, there's all sorts still to go yet. But we'll try and keep up with it with the camera as much as we can. Take care everyone and we'll see you all soon.